Stefan, can you tell some words about Belgian society? And it's, uh, I'm not a specialist about Belgian society, <laughs> but, but I'm always, when I'm abroad, I'm always so, uh, very surprised when I see about which minor things uh, Belgian politicians are busy. Or, well, and then, for example, we all know that, that uh, there have been and there are still tensions in Belgium between different communities and uh, uh, French-speaking, the Flemish, and, and, and in, in my part of the country, in Flanders, uh, the, um, the moderate nationalists came to power, so it changed uh, the situation here. Uh, but when I'm abroad and when I see what, what, what huge problems there are uh, in other countries, I always wondering why in my country people are quarreling about things, are quarreling about things that are not really important. Um, and also that very practical problems like traffic problems here in Antwerp, for example, uh, <laughs> already for 15 years. Uh, they are trying to solve the traffic problems uh, uh, in Antwerp and with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the traffic coming from Holland and it's going, uh, it's going through. It's, you can also say, well, it's not a world problem, it's not a very big problem, but for the inhabitants of Antwerp it's, it's very important. And they are not able to solve it for a thousand reasons. And then I say, when I'm living in China, for example, well, here there is no democracy, uh, and the party decides everything, but at least things like that are going more fluently than in my own country, which doesn't mean that I don't want uh, this democracy, and that I, uh, and of course I agree that every project, like for example this uh, building of, of uh, new new roads and, uh, and reorganizing the whole traffic system in, in, in my hometown, uh, that, that it's not important, but decision-making has to change in my country. It has to, to, to be more efficient and, and, and has to become more fluent, because now it's, uh, there are too many things that um, are blocked or are uh, that last too, for too for too, for too long uh, because politicians don't do their job and their job is to make decisions and so that's something when I'm abroad that I say oh strange things and, and sometimes I, I really can't understand. Uh, and what uh, changes uh, are you e expecting? What Belgium? kind of changes? Yes. In Belgium? Yeah. Well, of course, it, it would be nice if, if all social problems uh, would be solved. I think... Uh, the, 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 what the, kind the, of problems? Uh, poor people and... Uh, you mean migrants? Well, you have migrants who are poor people, but you also, you also have Belgians who are poor people. Or people who have really, at the end of the month, have, have uh, uh, problems to, to make ends meet. In, in, a, in a rich country like Belgium, for me that's a, that's a shame that you still have so many people who, who can barely survive. And then I'm, I'm not talking about the migrants, but about, about the Belgians. Of course, with the, with the migrants, it's, it's another problem. It's, and it's a very complicated problem, because uh, it has to do with the terrible situation where a lot of these people come from in, in their home countries, when, when there is uh, war or, or uh, political problems or whatever. But also, when the people arrive here, then they, they are faced with, with racism, with uh, um, uh, social discrimination, with uh, all kinds of uh, administrative problems. Um, so, I, I know it's very naive, but uh, I would like that kind of things to be solved. 
So <laughs> that we go to, and now I'm using a, a very Chinese word, that we go to a, to a more harmonious society. Society where, where people uh, can live together in, in a better way and try to understand each other. Because that's the big problem in, in a lot of societies. All, I would even say all over the world. It's very difficult. A lot of people don't understand or even don't want to try to understand other people. And you have so many um, uh, contradictions and... Uh, misunderstandings. Uh, yeah, uh, differences, misunderstandings, because people they also there look everything like black and white. Yes. This is good, this is bad. And they don't see the nuances and especially don't try to understand the others. Yes, but uh, I faced with such, uh, such a problem. Muslims uh, don't understand uh, cartoons and, and sense of humor and uh, freedom of speech. Uh, it's not all Muslims, but it's part of, of, of yes, Muslims. But, yeah. but a lot of them. A yeah. lot of them. And um, they they dislike when somebody criticizes them and, uh, and um, that's a problem that's a problem mm. of of, of because Muslims. well we we in the west we we think that uh, uh, freedom of, of speech is absolute yeah. and i think it too uh, so um, people who live here have to accept that yes but how how can we achieve this goal or, or these people might by trying to our explain change. our by trying to explain our view and by trying to understand uh, people who are not who don't agree with that uh, to trying to convince them and talk talk yes, about that's after after uh, but if you only say these are bad and we are, we are the only ones who are who have the right ideas well then you get nowhere because then then you achieve then you only achieve polarization yes but after Charlie Hebdo yeah that's terrible of course I yeah. see I see a lot of people live in the fear in Europe and free Europe well that's that's afraid. bad because because that's what the, the people who did these attacks that's what they wanted to achieve that people live in fear so the last thing we should do is to become afraid and to to retreat. No, we have to to fight to f but to fight for freedom, but not fight in uh, fighting others, but in trying to convince others, to trying to explain why this freedom of speech, freedom of uh, uh, press, is so important for us. Is it possible? I don't know. To Takes time. explain them. Work it, work for it. I mean, that's that's. The duty of politicians, the duty of all kinds of uh, community workers. Uh, so the whole society have, has to be involved in that. But it's not easy. I know that. Yes, and, uh, and yesterday I talked with um, a Russian woman who organized a march of a traditional family of uh, um, heterosexual. And she told me that in March uh, it was uh, 200 people, but on, in Gay Pride it it, it was uh, 2,000 people, mm -hmm. and uh, she, she was uh, she was afraid about uh, Europe's future. <laughs> so they. Uh, it's uh, it's good that she can demonstrate, no? We can agree or we cannot agree, but she can she can do that. But do you think in Moscow it's possible to organize a uh, gay pride? Mm -hmm. No. No. So she can be happy that she can organize this march here in in Belgium. Uh, yes, but uh, she cannot accept, uh, f for instance, uh, LGBT rights, and it's just one case. And uh, Muslims cannot accept freedom of expression and mockery. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what, 
What should we do with this? Uh... What should we do? I mean, as I can only repeat, try to convince them. And if they do illegal things, yeah, well, then, then, then the law has to, has to work. Uh, but we have our way of, of living and our uh, important um, society vision, like freedom of speech. And well, that's the end. That's the end of the discussion. You, you, cannot, you cannot say here in Europe, uh, um, this is allowed to, to write or to say, and this is not. No, everything is allowed. Great, great. Right. So we can say to Europeans, don't be afraid. No, absolutely. No, 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 no. Fear, that's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> And we can publish a, um, a book, uh, Humorous Islam. Yes, well, <laughs> of course, if you want that. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you so much, uh, Stefan, for this uh, interesting interview. And, um, Wish you all the best. And uh, With pleasure. You, you make a great job to defend the freedom of speech uh, in Europe. Okay. Let's do it together. Yeah. <laughs> With pleasure.